I appreciate you being here tonight um, and coming and chatting with us about practice better and enhancing workflow. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good conversation. It's um, practice better has such an amazing tool that they've built out and so specific for holistic practitioners. So I think it's really wonderful that you're sharing that. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we did a webinar with Vexia Diagnostics, and they mentioned that they've partnered up with you folks as well. Um, and mm -hmm. you're you're working on some cool things with them. So that was really neat to hear about. Yeah, yeah. Avexia is um, in the pipeline coming. We're always kind of looking at new integrations and partners to increase the experience on the platform. So that's a really kind of exciting sneak peek that you guys got that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely stay tuned for that one. All right, so for today, as I said, um, the topic of the night is how to enhance your workflow with Practice Better. So I'm here uh, tonight with Brittany Andrejean. Did I say that right? It's a tricky one. It's Andrejean, but you know what? Andrejean. Got the it, I yeah. got the inflection wrong. That's okay. My, my last name is a tricky one too, and no one ever gets it right. <laughs> So Brittany is a business success coach with Practice Better, and she's also, like all of us, certified in holistic nutrition. Um, so to give a little overview of what Practice Better is, just a taste, um, it is a complete practice management platform that's created specifically for health and wellness practitioners. So it was um, co-founded by a holistic nutritionist who wanted to streamline her own workflow. So that's really their niche is um, supporting holistic practitioners in order to grow um, their practices and their businesses. So I'm really excited to have Brittany joining us to share those operational solutions that Practice Better has developed um, to support holistic practitioners with providing that high quality client care and to be able to build a sustainable business at the same time, because that's important too. So I will turn things over to you at this point, Brittany. I'll let you um, share your screen, get started with your um, presentation. For uh, anyone here, feel free to throw any questions into the chat as we go or use that Q&A function, whichever one you're more comfortable with, um, and we'll be monitoring that as we go as well. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. I was, um, when I was practicing a part of this group when it still lived on Facebook. So when I go through some of the members, I definitely recognize a lot of your names. It's really nice to connect with fellow holistic nutritionists. Um, I am... Yeah, coming to you from Calgary. So I'm really excited this evening to just chat with you about workflow. I know that this would have been such a game changer when I was practicing. So it feels uh, like a topic very close to my heart. I feel like I've experienced a lot of the pain points um, that maybe some of you are all feeling too. So um, like Veronica said, please do use the chat. I really love for these sessions to be really interactive. Um, any questions that you have, please feel free to share. We do have an exclusive offer for you at the end. So if you are new to practice better, stay tuned because we do have a little incentive to help you get started on the platform. Um, and Veronica is recording this. So if uh, you can't stay the whole session, um, no worries. It will be replayed in the group for you to catch later. All right, but let's kind of dive into the topic. Like Veronica mentioned, we're talking about enhancing workflow and kind of talking about really what that means. So, you know, there's so much discussion in our field around saving time, making more money, reaching more clients, and how can we do that in a really sustainable way that we're not going to burn out ourselves? So, you know, shifting from working one on one to groups to maximize your time and efforts, finding ways to system systemize and automate your business so that you can scale when it comes to the right time and it's done so in that sustainable way. And also just creating a really amazing workflow that makes you excited not only to work with clients, but you know, managing the administrative tasks doesn't feel like too much of a headache. And you, know, you can have a really great experience for your clients because that's going to lead to a lot of amazing results for them and great word of mouth referrals for your business. Um, so I am going to share my screen so you guys can see the platform this evening here. And uh, today we'll be talking about how you can easily get started and practice better, but you'll also learn, you know, if you're working with one-on-one -on -one currently, how can you start to shift to working with groups without it feeling kind of um, incohesive for your business? So looking at things like packages and programs, um, we'll be talking through some of the setup steps that you need to take and also ways just to kind of automate your business, engage with your clients. I'm actually going to turn off my camera so that I can focus on my notes. You guys can focus on the screen share and we can dive in to the topic today. 
All right, so what you're seeing on my screen here is your dashboard. So if you are familiar with Practice Better, maybe this is familiar to you. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out right as we're getting started here is you'll note that I don't have the uh, kind of green, the Practice Better green here, and that's because I'm on a plan level that allows me to brand my portal. So I've got my own logo here and my own colors. And this is what my clients will see when they log in through their client portal as well. So it feels very consistent for my practice and my business. I get to represent my brand really well here. And just to kind of show off what you've got on your dashboard when you first log in, you will have uh, these different widgets. So these are the different boxes that you see. Uh, and it will kind of give you the different information that you need to stay apprised of any kind of given day. So things like your upcoming sessions, your pending invoices, tasks, labs, if that's a part of your practice. Uh, we do have an integration that we recently launched with Rupa Health, and we've got lots of resources for you here too. And I do want to say that these can all kind of move around. So if you are, you know, wanting to see something different in a different spot, you can easily kind of move these widgets around or even delete them. So you get to really customize it. And that's kind of a running theme through Practice Better is the ability to customize it to your specific workflow because we all do work a little bit differently. But let's dive into kind of the first few things that you'll need to get started to use Practice Better. So Practice Better being a practice management software kind of all in one does allow you to book your clients, see your clients and engage with your clients. And in order to do so, you need to start kind of building out your services. So this is how you will meet with your clients, the things that you're offering, you know, the appointment types. So you can see here that I've got a lot of different examples. And at the bottom here, I've also got packages and we'll talk about those in a second here. So this is a really nice way to kick off if you're just getting started within the platform. And I do wanna highlight here that in the bottom right, we have a red fast action button. So this will always be um, kind of the main functionalities of any page. So if you're just navigating the platform for the first time and kind of learning the ropes, learning how to get started, always kind of rely back on that red fast action button because this will tell you kind of what you're doing on this page. So you can see that I've already got a lot of examples up here. So let's take a look at one that most of us will likely offer this initial consultation and what it looks like to actually set this up here. All right, so this is kind of the page that you'll see when you're first building a service. You can choose a header image from our stock or you could even upload your own. So this is something that can be client facing if they're looking at your public booking page or if you link them to the service. So just kind of keep that in mind that you can really customize this and make it look like, again, really a part of your branding. You'll get to name the service and choose a color. So this will pop up on your calendar. So it will be nice and easy for you to kind of know exactly what you're um, booked for just by seeing the color. You can add a description to the service. So again, this is client facing. So you've got some nice formatting tools. One thing that I really like to encourage people to do is actually to embed a video. So this is kind of a, maybe an out of the box kind of, um, recommendation here, but what you could do is record a video of you describing the service, saying hello to your client, letting them know kind of exactly what it entails, and you can upload it to Vimeo or YouTube and even include that in your description. Um, so you've got lots of options to make this feel really personal. So you can add that description in there, then set the duration, so the number of minutes that the appointment length will take add in any terms and conditions. So these are something that you'll build into your practice um, based on your, um, your business. So they don't come standard. That's something that you'll put into your own account based on you know whatever kind of terms and conditions you want to introduce into your business. And then you've got more of the finer details here. So you've got the payment options. So right now in Practice Better, we have a kind of uh, two different models. So fixed fee. So that would be kind of when you're looking to collect one lump sum, or you could even break that lump sum into payments to make it more um, accessible for more people. Or we have ongoing payments. So this would be used in certain scenarios if you're looking to offer kind of a membership style of offer. Um, so think of that as kind of like your Netflix subscription. So um, just wanted to kind of highlight that you've got some options there in terms of what you can offer. So it's really nice because if you are looking to scale your business and reach more people at once, 
having a membership could be, you know, something that allows you to reach multiple people. Um, so I'll show you some examples of that later and how you can use that. Then you can set the fee. Uh, Practice Better does have a whole list of currencies here. So um, I'm Canadian. I think most of the group is Canadian here, but um, you can set your currency and set that to be the default. You can require to pay at booking. So no more chasing your clients after the fact to um, pay their invoice. I don't know if anyone's run into that headache, but it can be a bit of a runaround. So you can require for your client to pay right at the time that they book if you integrate with either Square or Stripe. So Practice Better has a whole list of third-party integrations that we offer. Square and Stripe are um, a part of that. So you get to choose kind of which one um, suits you best there. So that would be for the public booking page. And then you've got the client portal. So any of your existing clients, if they're looking to kind of book another service with you, you've got kind of the ability to separate those two. And then you've got your service availability. So I'd love to actually hear in the chat. I know we've got a couple of people watching us live. Um, are you virtual or are you in person? So maybe let us know um, how you're currently working. I know a lot of us have shifted lately to working virtually and to seeing our clients virtually, but you can do both. Um, and then when we're setting up our calendar, we can say kind of when we're available in what way, when that was a bit of a tongue twister, wasn't it? Let's just see the chat. Veronica says virtual Connie's in person. I always preferred the virtual. I'm definitely one of those people that loves working from home. So that model really worked for me. So I love the idea of having this online video chat and everything within practice better is HIPAA compliant. So you have nice, secure, um, kind of peace of mind that your patients and your clients information is staying private. Um, so you've got Zoom integration, and that's going to be key if you do want to meet with groups, kind of like how we're meeting today, or you can use the built-in telehealth um, feature as well. And then next year, you've got a lot of different booking options that are going to ensure that when you're setting up this service and your calendar and you're getting booked, that it doesn't kind of um, become too chaotic or anything. So, you know, if you need a couple of minutes before the session just to pull up your notes, grab a cup of water, use the washroom, that kind of thing. And then after the session to ensure that, you know, if you've got a really chatty client or something of that nature, you're not running into the next session. So you can kind of play around with those buffers. You can restrict your clients. So if you don't want any late, um, late uh, appointments popping up in your calendar where you haven't had time to prepare, you can kind of set this accordingly. You know, you could be more dynamic if you want. Um, or if you want a little bit more time to feel prepared, um, depending on your own personal workflow, then you can work with that as well. So you've got a bunch more options here. You can further customize this. You can redirect. So after the client books in the service, if you want to redirect them to say a Facebook group or a thank you page or a certain blog post or your Instagram, you can kind of redirect them anywhere that you'd like. Booking restrictions. So this one is um, really going to come down to your personal workflow. So if you want your clients to have access to the services that they're booking in for, keep it public. But if you want to have more control about who's popping in your calendar and when, you can choose to keep it private. So the private could be nice for something like a follow-up session if you want to kind of um, determine when you're seeing the client next and spacing out their appointments accordingly, but maybe for the initial consultation, we'll keep that one public. And then notifications. So one nice thing about practice better is we're always trying to identify ways to eliminate um, admin tasks or repetitive tasks and find ways to automate and systemize your business. And so notifications definitely fall into that where we'll let the client know that they're confirmed for their booking. We'll let them know if you've rescheduled, you know, anything like this, we can um, say that we want a reminder of being set out. There is a default, but if you want to customize this, so if there's any information that you want them to see or any kind of um, brand language that you use or certain messaging, you can include that here. All right, let's hit save changes. So that's what it kind of looks like to set up your services. And again, you'll go through that process with every kind of individual offering that you're looking to um, do with your clients. So maybe, you know, for the new practitioner, they're doing the free discovery call, the initial consultation and the follow-up. But as you kind of get your feet on the ground, you can get really creative with the types of things that you're offering. So, you know, if you're in corporate wellness, maybe you're going to come up with a service for that. 
If you're working with groups, we can actually create a new service and say that we want to be working with groups. And then you'll kind of go through those same steps there. So uh, really nice to kind of differentiate those two. But the nice thing is, is you'll still kind of filter it all through one availability calendar where it's all going to feel really cohesive to you. One thing that I do want to kind of note as um, my experience being a practitioner, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this is that when we're working with our clients, we know that it's going to take a bit of time for us to move the needle with their health and for us to kind of instill some, some new healthy habits and some sustainable change. So packages can be really beneficial um, for that. So this is where you get to group together services into packages um, so that the client isn't having to, you know, uh, purchase and book in with you know, one initial consultation and several of your follow-ups or something of that nature here. So if you know that you need at least three months with clients or you're offering a six month and a 12 month package, which is going to allow you to attach a higher price point and, you know, move the needle with your revenue goals and scale your business in that sense, then you can come up with these packages. So basically what will happen is you get to uh, kind of go through these same steps where you name it and come up with a description and the fee but you also get to then say what services and sessions are included in that. So you can see with my initial consultation, I'm saying that I have one of those. I then have a report of findings. So, you know, with any testing that I'm having my client do or any labs that I'm sending off for through um, some collaborative care practitioners, having one of those. And then I can say, I'm going to have 10 follow-up sessions. So I'm limiting the number that they can book. And then I will, um, you know, say that, the client can only uh, book one of those every two weeks or something of those sorts. So, you know, you get to kind of depending on the pace of that for your clients. And then one other service that I've set up in my practice here is final session. So as a practitioner, I know that this is no different really than a follow-up session, but I'm going to show you some really cool automations that can come from this um, appointment type shortly in the, um, in the demo here. And then the other thing that I want to highlight with uh, packages is that you can add a program. So I will be featuring our programs this evening and showing you a lot of ways that you can use that program feature that kind of steps outside of the box of our usual kind of group course or offering, though that's a great option too. So you can see here that I've included my client onboarding program, and we'll look at that in a bit. So just wanted to kind of highlight the use of packages there. I know sometimes when you're getting started on practice better, it can really be a little bit confusing of what's a service versus a package versus a program, but we're going to go over all of that today. All right, so I do want to note here as well that within any of your services here, let's go back to our initial consultation. One nice thing about using Practice Better to facilitate your business is you can set up payment plans for your clients. Like I mentioned, you can also add forms right to the actual service. So this client will not be able to um, book in this service with me unless they have filled out their intake questionnaire. So I love this because there's no more chasing around your clients for them to complete the form because you want that form obviously complete before you meet with them for their initial consultation. So no more kind of chasing anybody around, no more having to remind them. They will not be able to book this appointment without filling out this intake questionnaire. So that's just a, a little feature that I love and I definitely wanted to kind of point out to you. All right, let's actually go to setting up our availability now. I'm gonna actually pause. See, yeah, Veronica, that's super handy. I, I just felt like when I was practicing that I was forever chasing clients around and I'd get the initial consultation back like, uh, or the form back like a half an hour before the session. And it was like scribbled and incomplete and done by hand. And I had to make up the handwriting. And this is obviously, you know, before um, these types of services were available. But let's take a look at setting up our availability. So uh, through Practice Better, you can have all of your scheduling services done and you can get really detailed with this calendar. So um, I do use Calendly with my Practice Better work, but um, within Practice Better, I really love some of these features because you can get so detailed with what you're offering on what day and how it's being offered, you know, what locations you're going to be at. So I know Connie said that she's working in person, but maybe you're somebody who is working 
in person some days and virtually others, you can get really detailed with what you're doing here. So you can see that I've got quite a few of my days booked up here or just uh, my availability time slots, super easy to get started. So remember that I can always kind of fall back onto that red fast action button. But on this particular page, I can also just click and drag. So maybe on this day, I want to have a 9 to 12 30 time slot. And I'm going to be offering my one on one services during this time. And this is going to recur every week on Wednesdays. Um, I could, you know, change this around if I, my click and drop didn't kind of go as I hoped it would. And on Wednesday mornings, I know that I'm going to be working from home. So I'll be working virtually, offering uh, my follow up session. It will not be in person. So I'm going to uncheck that. And remember, we set these when we were first setting up the service. I'll be offering my final services and I can continue to go through and say what I'm going to be working on for that particular day. So again, I can restrict anything from being in person so that when my clients are actually booking in with me, there's no kind of error going to happen about where they think they should be. They end up at the clinic when they should be, you know, meeting with me over the, um, over zoom, anything like that. So I can save this here. And maybe I want to intentionally block some time off in my calendar to work on the back end of my business. So maybe that looks like client check-ins. Maybe that's doing some bookkeeping. Maybe that's just working on some new content or some of my marketing efforts. So I'm intentionally going to take a little bit of a break here um, in my day. And actually, let's move that a little bit further. So we'll go to 2.30. So I've got a, you know, a couple hour break there where I, where I won't be seeing clients. And then I can continue to go through and add in the rest of my services, just as I kind of did in that first time slot. But this way, I'm intentionally working myself in a break so that I'm not seeing clients booked in all the time. And if I needed to make an exception with a client where, you know, um, I somebody couldn't meet me any other time, I could override these availability settings by manually booking in themselves. Um, but my clients will not be able to book anything outside of these availability windows. So you get the idea here, I can go through and really make this intuitive. So again, uh, if I was a mom, and I knew that I had to pick up um, some kids from daycare or school, I could give myself a little window there if I had that flexibility, um, you know, kind of the perks of running your own business. If I knew that I was going to be in a clinic setting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I could have that properly reflected within my calendar. So again, you can get really intuitive with how this availability is set up and it's done through one. So I do want to highlight here that whether you're working virtually or in person, one-on-one -on -one or with groups, very easy to set that up. Let's say that I'm running a group program and I want to um, meet with that group, um, you know, once a month or once a week. So let's say that I'm running a group program that runs 21 days, something like that. I could say that on Thursday evenings here, I'm going to be meeting with my clients for that group check-in. So, you know, I'm fostering that accountability with them, things of that nature. So just wanted to highlight here, this is really going to work kind of no matter what business model you have. Can I pop in for one second, Brittany? Um, yeah. Connie has put a question into the Q&A about the calendar specifically. She's asking if Calendly is one of the integrations with the Practice Better calendar. No, so Practice Better does not have a Calendly integration. I'm, I'm sorry, I might have confused the, the situation there by, by saying that I do use it. But I think what I was trying to drive at there is that I just love the Practice Better functionality so much more. Um, so I use Calendly for my business with Practice Better because it doesn't work. You know, I, I don't have the availability set up in uh, practice better to work with my work life that I do with practice better, but I wish I could say, you know, what I was offering when, and I could be really dynamic. Um, so jealous of this setup that the practitioners get to use. You'd really have no reason to use Calendly within practice better because it is so intuitive and you've got that booking all within here, but just to highlight some of the third-party integrations that we do offer. You can see that we've got Dropbox, Google Drive, Google Calendar, Zoom. This is going to be really important for those of you who are working with groups, Square and Stripe. So really important if you do want to collect payment up front. We've got supplement dispensaries, labs. 
we did here at the beginning that we also have some things with Abexia in the works. So lots of different integrations that are just going to help. And on the client side, you've also got Fitbit. So they can actually take their Fitbit integration um, and import their information right into their journals, which is fantastic. All right, so now that you've got your calendar set up, so you've kind of gone through the motions of setting up all your services packages and you've properly reflected that in your availability, I wanna show you how you can actually share your services so that your clients can book in with you. And there's a few ways to do this. So I'm currently, I just went to the gear icon here and down to share my link. So one thing to note is that you will come up with um, kind of a public, uh, profile. So you've got your profile, but then you've also got your booking pages. So this one here that we'll see will show all of the um, public services and packages that you've created. So everything by default that you have within your account will show up on this page. But if you want to get really kind of um, specific to something that you're currently offering, so maybe you've got a new program that you're running or a challenge, Maybe you're um, wanting to kind of highlight one particular service or package, you can come up with custom booking pages and then make them really kind of intuitive on, actually, let's just go to this one. You can make it really intuitive about how it reads. You can be really intentional with the message here. So you can see here on my little demo page that I have a video embedded just to welcome people into the program, give them a really personal touch point about what it is. I've got lots of different copy about, you know, the benefit sale experience, what they can expect within the program. And then this is actually pulling from the program that I've created within Practice Better. So this is more of the kind of finer details here where I've got the price. And if they kind of come to the sales page, they like what they see and they want to register, they can then follow the steps here. So they'll get more of the kind of fine details about the dates, the description, the modules that we'll be reviewing, and then they can go through and sign up. So uh, this is kind of uh, Practice Better's solution for landing pages or sales pages. If you're kind of coming up with a funnel within your business to uh, filter clients into your business, lots of different ways that you could use this page. So, you know, imagine if you were running a five free day challenge and a free five-day challenge, I just flipped those backwards, and you wanted to kind of build that sales funnel for yourself, you could use one of these sales pages to kind of help enable that. So that's one of the ways that you can uh, share your services with your clients. The other thing that you can do is actually book in the client manually. So you'll always see that option there. If you're maybe in a session with them, maybe you're on that discovery call and you want to book them in for an initial consultation, very easy for you to do that. Or what you could do is invite them to book. So this will still send it to them directly, but allow them to actually choose what time and date, or you can just share the link. So this is going to just take them to a booking page very specific to that particular service. So lots of different ways for your clients to book in. And also you can uh, share that right within your website. So heading back to this page, if you want to integrate a booking widget directly onto say your Wix page, your Squarespace, maybe it's WordPress, kind of whatever, wherever you're hosting your website, um, you can actually take this code. I know that looks a little daunting, but we do have lots of help articles to walk you through step-by-step -step exactly where you're placing that. And then you can have that feel like it's really a part of your website. You can even customize the colors and kind of the sizing there. So it feels really kind of all cohesive. So lots of ways to share, you know, anywhere that you can put a link, essentially you can share those booking pages or your social media following or your email newsletter can then follow it to uh, kind of see what you have to offer and book in your services there. All right, any questions from the group uh, before we move on to the next kind of section here? Any, anything coming up for anybody that's watching? There was one more that I saw. Um, you mentioned at the beginning sort of towards the beginning that you are showing a demo of a level that allows for custom branding. Yeah. Um, where would they find the information about what the different levels are? Yeah, so I'll share a link here. Um, let me just pull that up. So we have a nice handy um, chart that will 
allow you to see the different tier plans within practice better. So the nice thing is, is that if you're just getting started for the very first time, we do have, um, we do have a free account with no kind of time limit to it. So really good place to start, get your feel for the platform. It has about 80% of our total features. And then when you are ready to move in, I'm just putting this in the chat here. So make sure you check that link there. This will kind of compare all of the different plan types and what features each of them has. And you'll be able to kind of vet which one you think is the best fit for you. Um, and just as a reminder, we do have an offer that's coming through at the end of our session today. So um, it will definitely kind of be a nice uh, little bonus if you are planning on joining the platform. All right, let's move on to the next one here. So I do also want to highlight uh, forms. So I don't know about you guys, but this was always just such a pain point for me when I was practicing, you know, sending forms that had to be emailed and then downloaded and then printed and filled out and scanned back, back in the day. And now it all just feels so much easier. Uh, kind of makes me wish I was still seeing clients when I think about all of these things here. So Practice Better has a form builder that allows you to completely customize and build out your own forms uh, to make sure that you're getting the information you want from your clients in the best way possible. So clients can fill the forms out on their phones, on their computers, and send them back. You'll be able to basically say what is required for them to answer. So there's no worry about um, you know, them missing a question and it being incomplete. So you'll see here that you can name the form, add a description, and then you've got this whole menu of what we call form elements. And these are essentially different styles of questions so that you can really um, format the question in the right way to make sure that you're getting that information. You can also kind of move these around, come up with headers, edit things, duplicate them as you're going through, delete. So, you know, we do have a few templates for you to work off of if you're just getting started in the platform. And then you can, um, you know, add and customize off of those templates if you like, or you can completely build from scratch. So um, really intuitive for your clients. Again, you're not going to be getting incomplete forms back. You're also going to be getting them back, you know, more uh, quickly, uh, just based on the fact that it's so convenient for them. They don't have to kind of run around to download and they've lost it in their inbox, all of those kind of pain points there. So I just wanted to highlight that. And I do want to say that um, as you get your feet on the ground with a platform, you know, you can really step outside the box in terms of the types of forms that you are offering your clients. One thing that I always like to highlight here is what I've created with a feedback survey. So obviously we know that feedback is such an important part of growing and scaling a business where we can kind of understand where we're thriving and where we need to improve. So I have a really simple feedback survey for my clients that will measure kind of their progress. So understanding if they actually met their goals that they set out to achieve when starting to work together and then kind of their overall experience. If they give me a testimonial, I can then use that in my marketing um, so lots of different metrics that will help me understand kind of how well I'm performing in my business um, based on my feedback survey here. And what's nice is I've actually set this to automatically go out to my clients. So Practice Better has a feature called automations, and it's essentially exactly what it sounds like. It's automating certain tasks. So anything that's kind of repetitive work. And what I can do here, actually, I think I have a... a um, set up one already here. Do I? Maybe not. Um, so basically what I can do is send the form after a booking is confirmed. So if I wanted to send that feedback survey, I could really easily do this and not have to think about it because I don't know about you, but asking for feedback can be challenging sometimes. So I can say I want to send up the follow-up or sorry, the feedback survey, and I'm going to attach the attach this to the final session. So I kind of hinted at the creation of this leading to ways to automate other things within my workflow. So that final session, uh, I want to send that form after the session. So I'm going to say that I want this one hour after they've had their final session, they'll automatically receive that feedback survey. 
And that's going to just help me, uh, you know, take direction within my practice, understand if my clients are achieving their goals and likely learn a lot of really important information that's going to inform the improvements or the changes that I can introduce to help my clients achieve better results. I can then, you know, the more results, the more word of mouth referrals you're going to go on to get and you can scale your business from there. And what's nice is you can also use our reports feature. So we have lots of different reports for, you know, more of the working on your business side of things. And I can use this form response summary. So this is going to compile all the completed forms into a really visually nice um, format. And I can submit this. So once I have uh, clients who have completed this multiple times, you know, multiple clients have finished their time working with me and completed this feedback survey, I'd be able to see all of their answers together. So this is kind of like, you know, when you have a Google form and you're looking at all the answers together and they've got some really nice visuals for you there too. So that's going to help you um, understand and you're not having to go into every single client's folder and look. So here's a good example. This is coming from my community poll. So asking questions about, you know, a new offer that I was looking to introduce into my business. And I can see very quickly that the topic that resonated was stress reduction. I can see that people liked the idea of a guided program. So um, I can also see that they preferred the three month duration versus one month. So really great way to get business insights within your um, practice there through the use of forms. Um, so think outside the box when it comes to forms that you don't have to just use them for, say, the initial consultation and check-ins. You've got your list of clients within practice better, so you can really start to uh, use forms creatively. So I've got like a sugar addiction quiz. That's a part of one of my programs. Really simple, just kind of a yes or no, and it's more so for the client than it is to inform me as a practitioner on any kind of thing, um, but lots of ways. So um, really want to encourage people to think of ways to include it in your um, program modules and just in the back end of your business work too. On the topic of forms, uh, Connie has sent in another question for us. Um, she's asking if a client is not comfortable with filling the form out online, is there a way that they can print the electronic form that's been created? Yeah, so um, when the client receives the form, they could choose to download it. Um, and then once they've downloaded it, if they wanted to print it out and fill it out by hand, they could. I will say though, that when a client chooses to do that, you do lose a lot of the kind of um, dynamics of a form. So just kind of taking a look here at Mary Smith, my demo client, if we look at her forms here, so let's find one that she's actually completed. So for example, um, Mary has completed this form. I can then go on and annotate it directly within the note. So if there's anything that I want to kind of make note of that's going to inform me um, in my meeting with her, I could. Um, I can also, again, use some of those reports that are going to pull information together. Um, so if you have a client that's willing to do, to fill it out by, you know, digitally, that's probably better for you, um, but you, they could choose to download it and print it and upload it to you as well. You did, you did mention earlier um, that Practice Better is compliant with um, the different privacy legislation as well. Um, so depending on how the client would be sending the downloaded form back, if that's a hurdle for the client, um, I feel like that could be potentially a selling feature as well, because it's certainly more secure than something like email. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one thing that I want to point out, you know, depending on who your clientele is and who you typically work with, um, I'm just kind of hopping over to programs here. So Practice Better does have a programs feature and I've got lots of different, different examples, but it feels kind of relevant right now to show you this idea of an evergreen um, program type. So evergreen means that it's based on just time elapsed versus like a calendar date. But this is something that I've attached to all the packages that my program or my patients are um, enrolled in. So when they buy a package with me, they'll automatically be enrolled within this client onboarding program. And this is helping them to just kind of get familiar with the um, platform. So they'll first have an introduction into the business here. They've got a couple of PDFs that are going to help them kind of stay on top of, you know, their appointment timelines and the package details of what they've purchased. But then they've also got a lot of different resources on how to use the platform successfully. 
So if you do have a couple um, clients who feel less tech savvy, know that we do have resources to support them. And you can also, um, you know, we really like to encourage our clients to come up with a demo client. And that way you can also record your own videos and, you know, come up with your own version of this so that they know how to fill out a form, for example, if that's part of the hurdle there. All right, where are we at here? So we kind of talked about um, forms. One thing that I do also want to show um, that I think a lot of people will benefit from is note templates. So oftentimes when we're meeting with our clients, we are taking notes. Um, I love the idea of digital notes because anything I do by hand ends up just being uh, chaotic and hard to read after the fact. So note templates basically allow you to create a framework of your notes so that uh, when it does come time to meet with your clients, you have basically everything that you need and it's just a matter of filling out the information. So this is really nice for ensuring consistency with your appointments. So you ensure that you're asking the same questions. It will help with the timeliness of your appointments to make sure that you're asking the right questions at the right time and that you're not missing anything that you're going to later think of, oh shoot, I should have asked that question and now I feel like I'm missing information. So great for helping to kind of guide the appointment as well. And you can choose to, you know, come up with whatever format you want. So if there's particular questions that you're asking during your follow-ups, for example, um, and you don't want to have to write those all out when you're later referencing your notes so that it's clear, come up with one of these note templates. You can choose to share these notes with your client or not. So if you want it to be visible, you would just click this icon, but if I wanted it to be private, maybe there's something specific that I want to keep just to myself, um, you can keep that. Um, hidden there. And you can come up with all, all different kind of format questions too. So you've got that menu here. So again, practice better is really all about uh, finding ways to repeat or reduce repetitive work. So if you're asking the same questions over and over again in your follow-up sessions, or you just find that things are feeling a little disorganized, or you're having a hard time keeping it to that half an hour time limit or anything of that sort, no templates are fantastic. Once you've got that framework and the actual protocol created or the um, template there, you can create it for the client. So it'll allow you to then select the client. And then once it pops up, I'll be able to actually write in my information there. One nice thing too is that within any of the um, Within any of these here, you can also add in what we call placeholders. So that's access through these little arrows here. And I could include, you know, the contact name. And I could say that I want any of this kind of information to pull from their client record. So that way, when I do assign this note template to a client, any of this information that's existing within their client record will automatically pull into the note so that I'm not having to flip back and forth between their profile to reference certain information and back again. So really nice way to, again, streamline kind of the efforts and just that, that flipping back and forth that can feel like you've got a million tabs open, right? All right, so that's kind of the first few steps that I would recommend to really start to see clients. So building out those services and packages, your availability, make sure you've got your form set up and then the note templates. And really those are the four basic steps that you'll need to sit, start seeing clients. Everything else from there is just kind of a bonus and something that you can get to in time like programs. So programs are a way for you to work with you know, one-on-one -on -one clients, if that's what you want to do, or with groups. So if you are looking to shift into group work, this is something that you could um, entertain. And you've got lots of different ways that you can use uh, programs within Practice Better. You can see lots of different examples here. So I've got everything from the fixed date to evergreen examples. So I just want to highlight the difference between the two. So fixed date refers to um, calendar dates. So you'll see when I set this up that this one goes from May 1st and it goes for 21 days. So when I'm creating the modules and this is where I'm housing the content of the program, I get to actually say when I want these modules to be released. So I'm doing this one um, once every week, they get a new module with new content to kind of work through. And if I go back to my evergreen, so let's take a look at one of those examples here. 
So with the meal prep club, maybe this is something that you want to offer. I don't have any kind of time connected to these. So right when anybody uh, joins, they can join at any point in time. They'll have access to this content right away. Um, or you could choose to have this based on time elapsed. So it could be, you know, once every hour, once every seven days. So it's not tying itself to calendar days. But what I love about the programs feature is similar to forms, so you can get really creative with how you're using this within practice better. So you can see here, I have a five day mindful eating challenge and a five day sleep hygiene challenge. So maybe this is something that you offer for free. So kind of like a lead magnet, right? So something that's going to attract clients into your business, give them a taste of kind of what they can expect working with you, a sample of the benefits that you can provide. Sorry, just getting a dry throat again. And I can release a new module every single day for those five days. I can also add a group session. So I'll integrate my account with Zoom and then meet with them kind of on um, towards the end of that five day, just to have that kind of personal touch point. So that's kind of one way that I can use this. I can also do things like um, my onboarding program or the meal prep club. So I highlighted before that we have the recurring payments feature. So I kind of um, compared it to the Netflix subscription, right? So where they're paying a monthly fee ongoing until they decide to stop. So this would be great for something like this, where um, you know every week I have a live cooking demo that's happening. I could do that in person or virtually if I'm you know, willing to stream that. And I can kind of come up with a weekly theme I could come up with the recipe book of what we'll, we'll be uh, batch cooking together to set them up for a week of healthy meals, give them the recipe book, you know, so if I'm working with something like that clean life or any of the other meal planning services, and then I can come up with a grocery list too, right? So if we're helping to people learn how to include better ingredients and um, batch prep and set themselves up for success, this could be something that you consider offering. So we're going to be reaching a lot of clients this way. And monthly, we know that we have a bunch of people who are part of the membership where we're going to be getting that kind of revenue into our business here. And then I've got an archive. So, you know, any kind of past weeks, the clients would be able to access that there. So that's another example of the ways that you could use it. I think a lot of us think of programs as kind of that signature program or that one thing that really speaks to our niche audience of, you know, the pain points that we're looking to help them solve. So that's definitely an option for you too. So maybe you want to do six weeks to optimal digestion because that is part of your niche. So you could do something like that there. You could keep it really broad and talk about, you know, back to basics, movements, regulating stress. So really the sky is the limit. Um, and when you're creating some of these modules here, you've got tons of tools to help them feel really engaging. So we'll look here at this one. So I can come up with the description here, the start date of when this program will start and end. I can choose the payment model. So again, I've got the ability to have it as a fixed fee. And that would be great if I have kind of that signature program where everybody's going to be running through it at the same time. Or if I had something like the meal prep club, I could do ongoing payments. I've got a few other options there. And then I can start to dive into the actual modules for the program. So this is again, how we're going to drip content out to the group. And we'll just take a preview of what this kind of looks like. So I've got the ability to add lots of text, images in here, make it feel really kind of interesting for the client. So it's not too information heavy and reading like a textbook. I can even hop over to Canva and come up with custom graphics. You can kind of see some examples here. I can um, add any kind of URL. So I've added a button here that will take them to their meal plan. I've also linked a couple of PDFs. So you can see here, I've got one on aspartame, one on building balanced meals. And then I can also set tasks for my clients. So this is really going to help um, you motivate them with the direction and you know where they should be focusing their time and efforts. I know when a client is working with us, it can feel really overwhelming about what they should be focusing on, on at any kind of given moment in time. So tasks are fantastic for helping them stay kind of on track with what they should be working on first. And then, you know, later in other modules, if they want to move on to more advanced things, then they've got that really strong foundation to do so. 
You can also attach forms and worksheets. So that's where I've got really creative with that form builder. And I've added my sugar addiction quiz, for example, but you could do something like an intuitive eating assessment or anything that's going to kind of act as like a workbook, right? So taking those kind of key concepts that we're talking about in this module, and maybe you're coming up with some journal prompts or some kind of exercises for them to really kind of integrate the information that you're sharing with them. And then you also have protocols. So this is a fairly recent change um, to the platform. And that's one thing that you'll come to learn about Practice Better is we're always evolving and kind of adding new features and new enhancements kind of based on our community's feedback. So protocols are basically where you can house your recommendations of where you foresee your clients meeting their goals. We'll take a look at that in just a second here. But I'd love to hear in the chat from anyone that is watching, you know, when you look at kind of this list here, does it inspire you with any of the ideas that you see here? So could you see yourself doing a challenge or could you see yourself doing more of a signature program, maybe something that's membership based where you're doing something like the meal prep club? Let me know your thoughts. You know, could you see yourself adding a program into your business or maybe that's something that you already do? All right, we've got a few more minutes here. So before we wrap up, I do wanna show you protocols. So as I mentioned, protocols are where you house your recommendations for your clients to meet their goals. So I've got a couple of these templates created and templates again are, you know, if you're making repeat recommendations to your clients where, you know, we're in Canada, so maybe you're often recommending vitamin D and you know that, there's a lot of digestion tips that you're providing to people. So chewing their th food thoroughly and being really mindful about meal time, how they structure their meals with a, a carb, a fat and a protein. Maybe this is recommendations that you're giving to every single person. You can actually create a template. And then when it comes to actually making specific recommendations for that client. So maybe you have a client that needs to be gluten-free or maybe you have a client that has a certain allergy. So maybe that is, you know, a nut allergy, or maybe they're really severely insomniac. You know, you can start to make recommendations specific to that client, but those recommendations that you're repeating often are there. So you're not repeating that work over and over. So you'll get to name your protocol, come up with the focus. So again, if you're working long-term with a client through a package, you know, this could shift in time as they run through their first protocol, you'll set the duration. And then you've got lots of different tools here to make this feel really engaging for your client. So again, you've got the ability to add graphics. You can embed videos directly into a protocol. So house them on YouTube or Vimeo, mark them as unlisted so that, you know, the um, the public can't find them unless they have the link. Uh, the client will be able to watch this right within practice better. And then you can add in all your information, attach files. If you have any disclaimers that you need to add, you can also add those in there as well. Food recommendations is the perfect place for you to make any recommendations regarding, you know, um, ingredients that you want them to include, reduce, or exclude. So you could write in the recommendation here, provide lots of examples, and then give them that logic too, right? So always helpful for the client to have the why behind uh, what they're doing and changing. And then supplement recommendations. So this is great because we do integrate with full script and Willovate. So um, nice and convenient if you want to come up with a full script uh, protocol, they can shop it online and have it uh, delivered right to their door if they choose to. But you get to basically say the brand recommendation that you want, the amount, when they should take it. And when the client receives this protocol, they'll actually have a nice kind of schedule. So it will tell them what they should be having, when, how much, that kind of idea. So really nice. We know um, as practitioners that certain brands are better than others. So you get to kind of um, make really specific recommendations here. And you can also, uh, you know, search through our database, even if you're not um, selected to integrate with um, Fullscript or Wellevate. So, you know, you could look at all of these different ones here, Barleen's if you want some Omegas, something like that. So lots of different options. And then you'll notice beside all of these that you have the ability to save. So even if you are, um, you know, working on a new protocol template, 
you can pull from those saved recommendations. So even coming up with your next template will be really easy as well. Lifestyle. So sorry I, sorry oh. to pop in for a sec. Connie's asking, are the supplements that are listed just the ones that are listed on full script and well of eight? No. So you've got basically, um, you can add anything in here. So you could also just go with um, your own supplement. So if you don't see it um, within our database or through Fullscript or Wellevate and you know it and love it, you can add it in manually as well. All right, let's just head back there. Same idea with lifestyle recommendations. So as you're adding these, we do have some different categories to make this really easy for you. Um, and you can then, uh, you know, manually add something in as well if it is not a part of those lists. And again, choose to save it so that if you are coming up with another protocol or even a protocol template, it will be really easy to add that in. And then you've got the ability to add supporting docs. So really great, whether you're working one-on-one -on -one with a client or even doing kind of that signature your program where you still want to make some of these recommendations for your clients. Um, lots of ways to include great information within these protocols uh, for your client, and then they can work on those goals as they uh, complete it. You can, you know, move on to the next protocol as well. All right. I think we're kind of getting to the end of the hour here. So um, I know I've shown you a lot. This is really just kind of the tip of the iceberg when it comes to practice better. Uh, we do really pride ourselves on being um, what we like to refer to as an all-in-one practice management um, platform. So, you know, beyond what we've seen today, there's lots of ways to engage your clients, whether that's doing something like the secure chat and messaging your clients here. So, you know, lots of conversation happening there. If you wanted to meet with your client to host a video session, you can do that right through the video or through the platform. You've got journals here where you can um, have information about uh, food and mood and lifestyle where you can see some of their habits and really analyze, you know, some of their nutrient goals and targets. So lots of ways to stay connected with your clients as well. Uh, you can set up tasks for them. You can set up tasks for yourself for accountability. I know that's like half the battle when you're working with a client is just keeping them engaged and on track with what you're recommending them. So we really kind of pride ourselves on having a lot of these features that are going to help your clients stay focused and know what their goals are um, and allow you to have really easy communication with them. So before I hop off, um, let's just check the Q&A here. Can uh, practitioners request to have brands added, such as all the products with Microbiome Labs? We always pay attention to uh, client feedback. So um, if you have an integration partner request or a feature or anything of that nature, um, we're always welcoming feedback from our group. Um, so certainly connect with our our team, we have a Facebook group exclusively for um, paid members. And I'm just going to turn my camera back on so I can um, say goodbye to you when we wrap this up. So yeah, always share feedback. We're always listening. We're not like, we don't have the ability to be super dynamic with rolling out new features, but we're always listening. So yeah, keep those in mind. Um, so um, thank you so much for having me this evening. I hope that kind of gave you a taste about what Practice Better can offer. I am going to just quickly pop in a link here within the chat for you to check out the platform. So check out the chat there. And if you are interested in getting started, uh, we do have a discount code for you. So it's 20% off for four months on any paid plan. So um whether that's now or later, if you want to spend a little bit of time on our free account, no problem. That code is there for you when you are ready. So thank you to Veronica for hosting me. It's really nice to connect with fellow uh, holistic nutritionists. Um, yeah, just really nice to, to meet with you all. It was great to have you. I think that was, I got some feedback in the chat that that was a great presentation. So that's excellent. And um, that special offer that Brittany's just mentioned, we'll include that information with the replay as well. So if you missed anything, if there's any features that you want to go back and look at um, before you make that decision, we'll make sure that that information is posted up with the replay as well. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who's able to join live. Thank you again, uh, Brittany, for coming and sharing all of this with us. 
Um, I'll let everyone get on with their evenings, um, but this is a really great presentation. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Veronica. Have a great night, everyone. All right, take care. Bye-bye.